In this lesson, we'll continue to explore the function of solid objects. So here we are, picking up just from where we left off at our last scene. We have our character, Philip, at the top of the stairs, and we have a stable animation, or a stable simulation of him falling, but it doesn't quite have the stylistic uh, look that we want, sort of of a waxy, melty creature uh, falling, kind of slinking down the stairs. So let's rewind just a little bit here and start to look at the parameters that we can use to make those adjustments. Fortunately for us, they're all located right here together underneath the Model tab. Now, one thing that we can do is start to adjust these top two elements, the shape stiffness and the volume stiffness. It's usually where we want to start when we're making these kind of adjustments. So the shape stiffness, we actually want to lower that down quite a bit. What that is is uh, the ability of the mesh to avoid deformation. Okay, so let's go ahead and lower that down, allowing the mesh uh, to be a little looser. It's not going to be quite as stiff or resistant to that deformation. So we're going to try a value of 0 0.001, and we'll just rewind the timeline and see what we get. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is um, when we were working with cloth, we talked about how all of these parameters here sort of work in concert together. As you adjust one, you're going to have to adjust another one. And we can see that almost immediately here. Let's go ahead and rewind and play back now that we've cached that out. That we made one change to the shape stiffness, and all of a sudden our simulation appears to have gone unstable again. But it's, it's actually um, an easier fix than you might think. The thing is that we need to think about why this is happening, right? So if we look at our geometry, and we think about what the finite element solver is doing, you can turn on, right here in the far right-hand corner of your viewport, Display Point. Now, if you want, you can think about this mass density and how it relates to those points, and it will help you sort of get a grasp on how that model is, or why that model is deforming and exploding the way that it is. If you think about driving down a highway and uh, throwing out a bunch of ping pong balls out of the end of a truck, those ping pong balls are going to bounce all over the place. Very, very crazy and very, very reactive. It's because they're very lightweight and they also have um, a very, very reactive nature to them. Well, the two things that we know we can adjust to change that are number one, the dampening ratio. Right? That's going to make the reaction of those points a lot calmer. It's going to settle them down a lot quicker. And our mass density. So think about it as if instead of throwing ping pong balls out of the end of a, of a pickup truck, we're now going to throw a bowling ball out of the end of a, of a pickup truck. Now that bowling ball is not going to have near as much bounce. It's going to be a lot heavier, so it's going to be a lot more controlled response. So let's go ahead and adjust these two things here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the points in my display viewport here. And we'll zoom out. Now we've lowered our shape stiffness, and we got that crazy reaction. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more density here. And I'm just going to try a value of around 100,000 or 110,000 here. And my dampening, I definitely want to crank that up to calm the simulation down a little bit. So let's make that more of a 0.95. Let's rewind the timeline and see what our options are now, or see what, our, uh, what changes this made here in our scene. Okay, we're really starting to get that melty effect happening because of the way that the weight is pushing the points around. And you can see as the character slinks down the stairs, um, his different parts of the mesh are reacting sort of correctly to how we want them to. Oh, but then there at the end, we get a very strange reaction. It's, it's very awkward. Um, <laughs> kind of went unstable on us at the last second. So let's rewind our timeline. And again, think about setting up a simulation like this very much like you would a domino rally. Um, it's, you have to set up the pieces, adjust the way that they're set up and the angles and, and the different things that affect it, and then hit the first one, watch what it does, make adjustments, and then, you know, uh, watch it again. Make more adjustments and watch it again until you actually just hone it down and walk it down into being exactly what you want it to be. So let's think about these parameters that we have changed here. And the one thing that we haven't really adjusted has been this volume stiffness. Now, what the volume stiffness does is 
it basically allows that geometry, in this case our Philip model here, to preserve the distance um, between the actual like shells of its surface. So it's actually the volume that's inside of that object. There's not going to be volume loss. Okay, and what that means is it's the ability of the model to collapse in on itself, basically. Well, what we want is kind of that exact thing to happen. We want to encourage that collapsing of the volume. We want to sort of flatten him out and make him melt and run down the stairs. So to do that, let's go ahead and lower that volume stiffness to a value of, uh, I'm just going to try 0 0.001 here. In Domino Rally, we're going to rewind our timeline click play and you can see now that he really does start to flatten out in fact he's starting to lose volume which is what we want more paper thin character happening here so we really get almost a, a puddle like effect of our character almost fluid like effect for our character here so very nice very nice we were able to achieve that effect very simply actually by adjusting just four or five parameters in one single tab of the finite element um, solid object node. Now, speaking of the fact that we were getting almost like a, a, a flat sort of cloth-like effect out of our character, you probably did notice that a lot of the same um, parameters that we're adjusting here, we had found in cloth, like the dampening ratio and the stiffness and the mass density. And that's because the cloth solver inside of Houdini uses the finite element solver as its base. And I just want to show you one last little trick here that'll save you some time. Let's jump out into the object level of our scene, and we're going to turn off this um, display flag on the node called Fill, and turn on the display flag on the node called Quilted. And we'll dive inside of Quilted here. Now this is basically just a very simplified reconstruction of the scene that we had when we were first talking about cloth and collisions. Now, when we first set this scene up, we were working with cloth and collisions, we brought the chair in as a rigid body object. Now as a rigid body object, we had to go in and really adjust the, the way that the collision geometry was coming, um, was affecting the, the cloth. We had to mess around with whether or not we were going to use volumes. We had to look at whether or not we were going to use the edges or the points. But there's a shortcut, a little bit of a trick here. If we dive inside of our Autodop network and we look at the quilt cloth object here on the right, follow its, its data network here, all the way down the tree, and we find that it hits what is called a finite element solver. Well, of course, it's the finite element solver that we've been working with. What that means is that you can actually bring the chair into your simulation as a finite element solid object, and you don't have to mess with all of the rigid body setup that we had when we brought it in as a rigid body. It's really simple to do. Of course, we just jump back out to our scene level. We'll grab the chair. And on the solid object shelf, instead of organic tissue, which is what we chose when we chose Philip. Beside that is something called Solid Object. So let's just go ahead and click on that. And you can see that the collision geometry has already been made for you. And unlike when we brought it in as a rigid body object, we do have those little connections, those little fine detail elements in between the arms of the chair. Now there's a couple of things that we have to adjust. It's only like two parameters here. Let's pan up inside of our Autodop network now. And you can see that we don't even have um, that chair as a part of any rigid body setup whatsoever. It's brought in and plugged into the same merge right beside the quilt as part of the finite element solver object. So let's go ahead and select the chair. We'll rewind our timeline and click play. Now you can see that the chair begins to deform. Uh, it's losing volume and it's losing its shape right off the bat. And that's because that's um, part of the default nature of how Houdini sets up solid objects. However, it's really easy to adjust those parameters. Again, everything is located in one tab in one spot right here. We want to change our shape stiffness all the way up to one, meaning we don't want the uh, shape to change. We want to make sure that that holds its shape. Same thing with the volume. We will change that volume stiffness up to one and let's take our mass density 
all the way down to a, vo uh, to a, a value of 1. Now with a value of 1, basically we have a lightweight chair that's frozen in place um, with holding its shape, retaining all of its shape and its volume. So let's rewind now and see what we get whenever we have that cloth interaction. So here comes the cloth. You might also notice it'd be um, to your advantage to kind of run some tests here, but I believe that the finite element solver, when you're working with two objects together like this inside of a single solver, you're going to get a lot more efficient and faster reactions. But again, that could be dependent on the models that you're using and your scene. So you want to test out both methods whenever you first start setting up a scene. But you can see that we are getting that collision, uh, that natural looking collision. We do have the same elements that we had whenever we were working with it, uh, the chair as a rigid body. We have that wonderful deformation here on the cloth, the stretchy nature of the cloth as it hits the arms of the chairs and the back of the chair. And we got it all set up with one button. We clicked the chair, we brought it in as a solid object, and adjusted two parameters. We didn't have to dig through all the different tabs of the rigid body to figure out if we wanted to use edges or points or volumes. It's just very, very simple. So if you're working with cloth and you need to create those collision objects, keep in mind that you can bring them in as well as solid objects that work with the finite element solver.